Hey, my name is Marshall Livingston and I'm with Hack the Box. Welcome to this year's university CTF called Supernatural Hacks. I personally love CTFs. I can't even begin to tell you how many I've participated in, from biohackathons to hacking satellites and literally everything in between. Um, I'm especially excited for this year's uni CTF and for those like me that love the collaboration and new challenges that CTFs bring, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Um, I find that one of the most challenging things about CTFs and other competitions is preparing for them. When I was first starting them a little, a little over six years ago now, um, my friends and I started looking at ways to train and get better at these competitions. Other than just you know doing more competitions, which we did, but we wanted something that could get us trained up faster. This is when we started using Hack the Box and other platforms like it to train. For Hack the Box, we would focus on you know, the challenges and would teach each other things like we learned along the way. Now this worked, but we have something so much better today to help students and professionals get trained up quickly with a guided learning approach to hands-on education, and it's Hack the Box Academy. If you don't know about it, go check it out. It's got tons of great modules that my good friend Ben Rowland and his team have spent countless hours creating and tailoring to be the best hands-on guided training on the market. This will definitely help you prepare for CTFs and competitions. More importantly, it'll get you prepared for real job opportunities. This is what we're actually going to look at today. We've ported over Hack the Box Academy to our enterprise platform, which many universities use in their classrooms to complement curriculums, as well as university clubs to help prepare for these types of large CTFs and you know, college competitions like the CCDCs. Let's jump in. Currently, we are in the midst of porting this over to the enterprise platform, so today is a behind the scenes video of Hack the Box Academy on the EP and how your university classes and clubs could benefit from having it. If you're not familiar with the enterprise platform, be sure to check out my YouTube videos where I go into much more detail about it. Here in the bottom left, we can see the Academy Lab, which has a lot of spaces already built inside from other users in our organization. We can see defensive training, web application training, AD labs, and much more. Let's create a space specifically for this UDCTF and invite some of my friends that will be in the CTF with me. First, let's go down to the bottom and create a space. We'll name it UniCTF 2022. Now we could make this private just for the users that, you know, that are invited, or we can make it public so other people in our organization can see the material and even join in on the training if they prefer. Let's keep this one private for now. We can always change this later. After creating it, we are brought to the overview page, which gives us a quick breakdown of the content curated in the space, as well as some of the usage. Let's start building out some content in our space. Now we know there will be some web app challenges in the CTF, so let's start there. We can head to the manage button in the top right, and we are brought to this page where we can begin to add different types of content like role paths, which are a collection of modules focusing on a specific job role. These also have industry recognized certifications tied to them. Skill paths, which help hone in on fundamental skill sets, individual modules, and also playlists, which are kind of like paths, but you can create custom playlists for yourselves. There are a lot of features here that we can't showcase quite yet, but playlists are going to be a very unique feature moving forward and have some pretty awesome perks in the months to come. We have several playlists here uh, that have been created by others in our organization and we could use them in our space. However, let's head back to modules and start preparing for some of the web app content. Now, there's a lot of different training we could start with in web app security, like SQL injection, authorization attacks, cross-site scripting, template injection, command injection, the list just goes on. So let's start with some of the fundamentals to get a core foundational knowledge with the team. Uh, we can do that by searching for the above that I just mentioned. So let's just search for application. We see a few that would be really helpful for the range and talent on the team I'm on this year. We have some new people joining me, so it would be good to put them through file inclusion, so let's add that. Let's also add SQL injection fundamentals, web requests would be really good. An introduction to web application may be ideal. If not, they can always skip it. Broken authentication, cross-site scripting, there's just so much to learn. Okay, let's add the ones we talked about. 
we may need to make a playlist specifically for the web app training because I'm seeing that we have a module in here that goes over network traffic analysis. And I know my teammate Scott will want to do some PCAP analysis and other forensics challenges during the uh, CTF, but we can do that in a bit. Before we start building out playlists, I'm going to add myself and some of my teammates to the lab so we can start diving into the content. Let's take a dive into one of the modules and see what the training has to offer. Let's pick intro to web applications. This would be a great for the brand new members of the team of this year, but don't worry if you're a seasoned veteran and want some training in Academy, there's definitely content for you as well. Let's dive into intro to web applications. Here we have a module summary breakdown that gives us an overview of what we can expect to learn throughout the module. We also have sections with drop down features on the far right that gives us some insight. These are going to be great for newcomers to learn since it gives us a full breakdown of how application architecture is made up. Understanding the difference between a front end vulnerability versus a back end vulnerability and being able to identify it quickly will save you loads of time during a competition. And it's also a requirement to know if you were to ever move into bug bounty hunting or penetration testing. Great stuff in here so far. Oh, one thing to keep in mind is that this training can be paused and resumed at any time without losing your progress. It also says here that a firm grasp of the web request module is a prerequisite for successful completion of this module. This is good to know in case you feel like you don't know enough about a particular topic to move forward. You can always pause your training on this module and go back to the recommended prerequisites. Awesome. Let's start. We have some reading to do first that provides us valuable knowledge on the differences between web applications versus websites, as well as web apps versus operating system apps. Scrolling a bit further down, we can see some of the common web application distributions. Now, this is really helpful considering we will most likely experience these during a CTF or a competition, and will most certainly experience them when bug bounty hunting or performing penetration tests. I know I've seen these hundreds of times. Most competitions will have some sort of web application routing, and in this module, it tells us that some of the best techniques to use and start with is sifting through the front end components, which would be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, AKA the front end Trinity. Here, we would try to look for things like sensitive data exposure and cross-site scripting. This is great to know. Now we have a plan of attack when facing a web application. First step, is to sift through the front end Trinity, following with a review of the core functionality and interactive um, components. Awesome. Scrolling a bit further down, we are presented with some uh, web application attack types. We should spend some time here to familiarize ourselves with these. We also have access to modules that cover each one of these flaws and take us through how to exploit each one of them. There were no challenges on this page. So let's speed things along and jump to the next section and give that a quick read. In this section, we are covering web application layouts, which have many different layers consisting of the infrastructure, the actual components, and the architecture. No two web apps are the same. So this section breaks these layers down into very digestible and understandable points. For now, let's move past this section and head to the next one. Notice that I won't use the mark as complete button here simply because I don't want to miss out on the education this page may, page may have to offer. However, Academy does not limit me on how I go about my training. If I want to skip a section, I am most welcome to. So let's jump to some of the hands-on activities which start in section three, front end vulnerabilities. Now we're getting into some of the front end vulnerabilities that we covered in section one, being sensitive data exposure. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It refers to the availability of sensitive data in clear text to the end user. This is normally identified in the source code of a web page or a web app. The image below is showing what it looks like when you right click on a web page and select view source. Now, this may look like a lot of junk, but in fact, it's exactly what we need to be searching through when taking our first steps and sifting through that front end trinity. Here we are looking at links to external sites, any comments the developer may have left, maybe there are links to cloud instances that are being used to pull images, and other things to this particular site. There is a lot of ground to start covering, and this is just the HTML. 
Next, we would want to start going through JavaScript components since this is where the actual functionality and interactivity of the website really is brought to life. Have you ever seen a login form give you an error because you forgot the at symbol when filling out the email section? Or maybe you tried to put in a password and the website told you that the length for the password wasn't long enough. It is very likely the web app was utilizing JavaScript to make these checks. Scrolling down, it appears we have reached a challenge or a checkpoint where we need to check the login form for sensitive data exposure. In this case, we need to find exposed passwords and submit the password as the answer. Okay, let's get to work. First, let's spin up Pwnbox. If you're unfamiliar with Pwnbox, that's okay. I'm going to give a quick overview right now on what it is while we are spinning it up and spawning our first target. Uh, first, I'll select the region that is most appropriate for my location and then wait while this loads up for me. Pwnbox is a fully browser-based attacking VM with tons of penetration testing and forensics tools ready to go. You don't need anything other than a computer with an internet connection. No setup or install is needed. I use this all the time, actually, when testing out new CVEs or doing demonstrations with teammates or at conferences. The OS is Parrot, which is Debian-based Linux distribution similar to Kali. I personally love using it. All right, now it's time for some hands-on fun and to put what we've learned to the test. Let's spawn our target. Now that we have Pwnbox spawned, let's open this up in a new window to get the full browser experience. All right, now that our Pwnbox system is spawned in full screen and our target is spawned and ready to go, let's head to the link provided. We have some conditions and warnings here in the terminal upon initial launch. Let's take note of these and be sure to follow them closely. Now, we need to find an exposed password, and we can do that by going through the first steps we've been talking about, starting with sifting through the front end trinity. Let's start with viewing the page's source code by right-clicking and selecting View Source. To a trained eye, we would see the comment floating below, probably before reading or reviewing anything else. We see the credentials with the password being hidden in plain sight. Nice. Let's take this and submit it as the flag. Great, let's move on to HTML injection. This is another great topic to get familiar with early on as it's going to be a good building block for other types of injection vulnerabilities, such as SQL injection, command injection, template injection, etc. HTML injection is pretty straightforward. It's unfiltered user input that is displayed on the page. It's that simple. This could be paired very dangerously with something like cross-site scripting. When going through that module, you will learn how to take this vulnerability we are performing in this current lab and use it to change the code that is served up from the server. An example is that an attacker would use something like stored cross-site scripting to inject malicious code into a web app, like having the login form send the attacker the credentials of anyone that logs into the web application or maybe putting up harmful advertisements on a site like clickjacking. Scrolling a bit further down, we can see the code for this application and get an idea of what it's doing. We have a button that when clicked calls a JavaScript function called input function. The HTML text tells the user that you should click this button and be prepared to fill out your name. Right underneath that, we see an HTML element that consists of a paragraph tag, which has an ID attribute attached to it uh, with the value output. That ID attribute is a way to reference that particular HTML element. This is important to keep in mind. It's like giving a person a name so we can reference that person later. If we look a bit further down, we can see the actual JavaScript and how the function is written and what it's doing under the hood. We can see it's assigning a variable called input that prompts the user to please enter your name. An if condition is next, saying if the input from the user isn't blank or null in this situation, um, then do the line below. The line below starts with document. Imagine document as being the main page made up of all the front end Trinity code we've been reviewing. Get element by ID is pretty straightforward. We're saying so far in this document, 
get the element with the ID of output. The dot enter HTML is the value or text that the element should contain, which is now going to be your name is plus the input variable. Here, we can see that the input value is not being sanitized at all. So we could put in really anything at this function um, and this function would just spit it back out to us. We could even put in an entire new HTML element or a JavaScript code or a CSS right into the button when asked to enter our name. Pretty awesome. Let's give this a try with this new challenge. The question is, what text would be displayed on the page if we use the following payload as our input? Well, the element is a link and the value of that element whole uh, is the click me. So the answer must be your name is plus click me. There is so much value to be had in these modules. Even though this was a rather beginner module demonstrated today, we have so many that can get you fast tracked into a new career or smashing the competition at competitive events. I'll create a playlist next for web app training along with some additional content for digital forensics and network analysis next for some of the other teammates. That way we can all be training and preparing for upcoming events. Building out training materials has truly never been easier with Hackthebox now that we are getting Academy into the enterprise platform as it will complement all of the other training solutions we offer. Universities typically like to combine the training we cover today with our dedicated labs offering, which is much more of a black box approach to interactive learning. It's a great way to take the KSAs or knowledge, skills, and abilities you've obtained through the modules and coursework and put them to test in a realistic simulated scenario. Finally, I'll leave with another great way to prepare for competitive events and breaking into the industry, and it's through our certifications. We have hit a huge milestone with launching our industry recognized certifications in Academy. Currently, we have the CPTS, which is the Certified Penetration Tester Specialist, and the CBBH, which is the Certified Bug Bounty Hunter. Both of these certifications have full paths that have been built for students to follow. These certifications will most certainly stress test your KSAs in, this, in these specific areas of focus, and we have more certification and paths on the way. With Academy on the EP, you will have full unlimited access to these certs and paths as well. Good luck to everyone participating in this year's University CTF. And may your hacks be supernatural. <laughs> Happy hacking.